Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. The q and &E Lady Raiders put the regional in their rear view last week and moved on to tonight's Mount Zion sectional. Taking on Chatham Glenwood, we'll take you to the highlights. This one a bit closely contested early on, but as always, the Q&D student section dressed to the nines. Even saw Teletubby in there. We go to the highlights here. Jordan Frerichs was double teamed seemingly at every turn in this ball game. In this ball game, Glenwood still couldn't stop her though. Three-point play here. Miss Frerichs had 13 points and in the process becomes Q&D's all-time leading scorer tonight. Congratulations to Jordan. Later on, a bit of a sluggish first half for QND. It was Cassidy Gangenbacher, though, giving her team a bit of a spark here for three. As you see, Glenwood able to work inside there, keep the score somewhat close. There's Gangenbacher, though, getting open top of the arc for that three pointer, helping QND get out to a lead in the second and third quarter. Later, Glenwood hanging around early in the first, but it was too much Cassidy tonight, too much Mary Beth Hugenberg. As QND gets the win, they advance with a 52 to 30 decision tonight. Tonight over Chatham Glenwood, they will move on to the next round. And who will they play? Well, it's going to be a rematch with Champaign Centennial, who QND knocked off in December by, I believe, four points. It was a very close ball game. Centennial wins against Taylorville tonight, 58 to 44. So QND versus Centennial, a rematch on Thursday for the sectional title. Also, we'll take you into the Missouri girls scores we can tell you about tonight in the class two district five quarterfinals. It was Paris over Wellsville. Peyton Gruber with 22 points in that one. So Paris moves on to play Clopton, who is a 10 point winner over the Canton girls tonight, 53 to 43. Also, too much Silex tonight for Van Farr, 85 to 16 winners there. They will take on the winner of South Shelby in Louisiana. This game slated to start at 9 o'clock. This is probably just wrapping up, so we'll hope to get the score on ConnectTriStates.com later on tonight for your viewing. Also, Class 2 District 6, it was Marceline Girls over Western, 45 to 34. Scotland County fans may be interested in that one because they will get the winner of that one if they can move past Cairo. Also, non playoff action tonight, you see Skyler and Putnam County also to face the winner of Knox County and Milan. This score yet to come in as well. One non playoff game, Hannibal knock, excuse me, falls to Mexico. Tonight, 46 to 29, despite Teresa Sheffer's 10 points in that ball game. How about some Iowa boys action? Kia Cuck and Fairfield Chiefs were up eight at the break in the third quarter. That's when they stepped on the gas. Johnny Dahl, thank you very much. Takes the steal to the other side of things and lays it in. Kia Cuck off to a very good start. Fairfield was kind of hanging around in the first quarter, but as I mentioned, a lot of Kendall Clark tonight. The tip in very nicely done right there. As I mentioned, Kia Cuck really able to step on the gas in the second half later. Dahl misses. Clark would rebound and score with the foul right there. The big man just too much to handle for the black and orange tonight. Off the inbound then, Drake Ryder hits the deck, flips to Dahl. It was Kia Cuck still up by 10 at this point. Not pictured. Dan Williams had 15 points in this game tonight. Kia Cuck wins it 65 to 40. Their next game will be on Thursday in the next round against Solon. Also tonight, one other Iowa boys score to tell you about. It was Fort Madison ending their season tonight. Final score against Williamsburg was 61 to 50, and they finished 14 and 7 on the year. Missouri boys action class three, district seven, top seed Palmyra hosting Brookfield. Just too much Panthers in the early going in this one. Trevor Many had him. Himself a heck of a night. Deflects the pass right there. Scores with the foul. Later on, Brock Butler runs the floor so well, just kind of springs out a slingshot on that one. Lays it in. Palmyra leading early and in the middle and in the late of this game as well. You'll see here more defense. Will Funkenbush breaks up the pass. It's Butler to many. Back to Funkenbush. Palmyra just cruising. Gets contributions from all over the floor tonight. Cole Kaiser, you'll see him score down low here. Later on, Caleb Kaiser would pick up the steal and Kevin Bross gets a nice bucket down low. 38 to 20. Palmyra led at the half. Trevor Many finishes almost with a triple double 25 points, seven boards, eight assists, and two steals. 77 to 45. Palmyra wins this game, and they will get the winner of Clark County and Mark Twain tonight. And that winner was Clark County, 68 to 37. Kyle Kovar with 20 points in that ball game. Also, Bowling Green and Macon, another late start tonight. Hopefully, this score coming in very soon. And it was Monroe City falling to Highland, 57 to 42. That's other action in Palmyra. Other Missouri boys action tonight. Class 1, District 10 out in La Plata. Top seed Marion County looking very good tonight against Brashear. Reed Plunkett gets things going with a three-pointer there from the corner. And that's a good jump start for the Mustangs, who later got this pickpocket from Clay Pollard. A little bit of larceny and the layup uncontested on the other side. But Brashear would try to keep things within reach. It was Hayden Hausman here getting the slash to the bucket off to the left side of the hoop and gets it to fall. But as I mentioned, Marion County had answers for everything.
Clay Pollard and company just way too much tonight off the inbound right there. How about some Logan Krigbaum as well? Deep three-pointer from the sideline gets it to fall. And Kaysen Spratt getting in on the scoring as well. Baseline jumper, a little pull-up. 15-footer gets it to go. Kaysen Spratt once again finishes off the Reed Plunkett assist here. Good court vision to put that one through the defense. Threads the needle there. And we'll finish off with Logan Krigbaum. Let's it rain from three-point land. He was good from the left wing, and now he's good from the right wing as Marion County advances with a very big 66-23 to win tonight over Bashir. Mustang's next opponent will be La Plata, who was a six-point winner over Macon County tonight. Also, North Shelby gets a big win and will face the winner of Bevere and Atlanta in the next round. Most dramatic game tonight goes to Griggsville Perry and Triopia. Class 1A regional out in Griggsville. No Tanner Huddleston tonight for the Trojans, so Josh Millard would have to pick up some of the slack, but that was a tough job to do against guys like Dryden Craven. Nice take right there for two for Griggsville Perry. Later on, Matthew Kennedy hits the three. Griggsville up by five, but Millard, as previously mentioned, helped keep his team close. The three-pointer right there from the right wing. Keeps Triopia within striking distance, but later on, late fourth quarter, looks like Levi King puts this game away for Griggsville, 34-29. to He puts his team up after the strong take right there, but Triopia not even close to done. Chase Halsney comes open in the corner, and he was also knocked down on the three-pointer. A four-point play brings the Trojans back to within one point. Griggsville Perry went one of two from the free throw line. Trojans down two, but not for long. Keegan Lear banks in the three-pointer from the left wing. Trojans up 36 to 35, 1.2 seconds left, and it would be Griggsville and Matthew Kennedy playing the role of heartbreaker tonight. Kennedy slips free in the low blocks, calls for it, gets it to go. A thriller tonight as Kennedy beats the buzzer 37 to 36. Griggsville beats Triopi tonight. They will take on Payson in the next round on Wednesday. Class 2A action in Warsaw tonight. Beardstown and Rushville Industry will take you to the third quarter. Tigers leading, and they were adding to it. Bubba Patterson hits a nice baseline floater on the drive right there. Later, Delaney Ortiz, quick little turnaround over a much taller defender. Nice bucket there. Tigers go up by 22. You'll see Gus Vermillion open here in the blocks, hits a turnaround of his own. Tigers rolling late in the third quarter. Not a bad three-point game tonight, though, for Rushville. Brady Crane hits one from the wing. Later, it would be Austin Jones off the inbound. Too much Beardstown tonight, though, 56 to 38 winners. They will take on West Hancock in the next round tomorrow night. One final score, it was South Fulton. They will play Unity on Wednesday. They were 53-50 to 50 winners over West Prairie tonight. One final note, Marty Bell and the QU Hawks pick up a very nice commitment. Herm Senior from Springfield Southeast pledges to Quincy tonight.